A flamethrower is a mechanical incendiary device designed to project a long, controllable stream of fire. They were first used by the Greeks in the 1st century AD. In modern times, they were used during World War I, and more widely in World War II. Some flamethrowers project a stream of ignited flammable liquid while some project a long gas flame. Most military flamethrowers use liquids, but commercial flamethrowers tend to use high-pressure propane and natural gas, which is considered safer as they both die out faster and are easier to put out. In comparison, a liquid flamethrower's fuel sticks to its targets and is mostly oil-based and thus harder to put out with water. They are used by the military and by people needing controlled burning capacity, such as in agriculture, e.g., sugarcane plantations or other such land management tasks. They can be designed to be either carried by the operator or mounted on a vehicle. Military Flamethrowers Modern flamethrowers were first used during the trench warfare conditions of World War I and their use greatly increased in World War II. They can be vehicle mounted, as on a tank, or man portable. The man portable flamethrower consists of two elements, the backpack and the gun. The backpack element usually consists of two or three cylinders. In a two-cylinder system, one cylinder holds compressed, inert propellant gas, usually nitrogen, and the other holds flammable liquid typically petrol with some form of fuel thickener added to it. A three-cylinder system often has two outer cylinders of flammable liquid and a central cylinder of propellant gas to maintain the balance of the soldier carrying it. The gas propels the liquid fuel out of the cylinder through a flexible pipe and then into the gun element of the flamethrower system. The gun consists of a small reservoir, a spring-loaded valve, and an ignition system, depressing a trigger opens the valve, allowing pressurized flammable liquid to flow and pass over the igniter and out of the gun nozzle. The igniter can be one of several ignition systems, a simple type is an electrically heated wire coil, another used a small pilot flame fueled with pressurized gas from the system. The flamethrower is a potent weapon with great psychological impact upon unprepared soldiers, inflicting a particularly horrific death. This has led to some calls for the weapon to be banned. It is primarily used against battlefield fortifications, bunkers, and other protected emplacements. A flamethrower projects a stream of flammable liquid, rather than flame, which allows bouncing the stream off walls and ceilings to project the fire into unseen spaces, such as inside bunkers or pillboxes. Typically, popular visual media depict the flamethrower as short-ranged and only effective for a few meters, due to the common use of propane gas as the fuel in flamethrowers in movies, for the safety of the actors. Contemporary flamethrowers can incinerate a target some 50-80 meters, 160-60 feet, from the gunner, Moreover, an unignited stream of flammable liquid can be fired and afterwards ignited, possibly by a lamp or other flame inside the bunker. Flamethrowers pose many risks to the operator. The first disadvantage was the weapon's weight and length, which impairs the soldier's mobility. The weapon is limited to only a few seconds of burn time since it uses fuel very quickly, requiring the operator to be precise and conservative. The weapon was very visible on the battlefield which caused operators to become immediately singled out as prominent targets, especially for snipers. Flamethrower operators were rarely taken prisoner, especially when their target survived an attack by the weapon, captured flamethrower users were in some cases summarily executed. The flamethrower's effective range is short in comparison with that of other battlefield weapons of similar size. To be effective, flamethrower soldiers must approach their target, risking exposure to enemy fire. Vehicular flamethrowers also have this problem, they may have considerably greater range than a man-portable flamethrower, but their range is still short compared with that of other infantry weapons. The risk of a flamethrower operator being caught in the explosion of their weapon due to enemy hits on the tanks is exaggerated in films. However, there are cases where the pressure tanks have exploded and killed the operator when hit by bullets or grenade shrapnel. In the documentary Vietnam in HD, Platoon Sergeant Charles Brown tells of how one of his men was killed when his flamethrower was hit by grenade shrapnel during the battle for Hill 875. 
flamethrower operators did not usually face a fiery death from the slightest spark or even from having their tank hit by a normal bullet as often depicted in modern war films. The gas container is filled with a non-flammable gas that is under high pressure. If this tank were ruptured, it might knock the operator forward as it was expended in the same way a pressurized aerosol can bursts outward when punctured. The fuel mixture in the fuel containers is difficult to light which is why magnesium-filled igniters are required when the weapon is fired. Fire a bullet into a metal can filled with diesel or napalm and it will merely leak out the hole unless the round was an incendiary type that could possibly ignite the mixture inside. This also applies to the flamethrower fuel container. The best way to minimize the disadvantages of flame weapons was to mount them on armored vehicles. The Commonwealth and the United States were the most prolific users of vehicle-mounted flame weapons, the British and Canadians fielded WASPs, universal carriers fitted with flamethrowers, at infantry battalion level, beginning in mid-1944, and eventually incorporating them into infantry battalions. Early tank-mounted flamethrower vehicles included the Badger, a converted ram tank, and the Oak, used first at Dieppe. The most famous flame tank was the Churchill Crocodile. Operation A propane-operated flamethrower is a relatively straightforward device. The gas is expelled through the gun assembly by its own pressure and is ignited at the exit of the barrel through piezo ignition. Liquid-operated flamethrowers use a smaller propane tank to expel the liquid. For safety reasons, the propane tank is behind the combustible liquid tanks in order to prevent being hit by a bullet. The propane is fed to two tubes. The first opens in the napalm tanks, providing the pressure necessary for expelling the liquid. The other tube leads to an ignition chamber behind the exit of the gun assembly, where it is mixed with air and ignited through piezo ignition. This pre-ignition propane line is the source of the flame seen in front of the gun assembly in movies and documentaries. As the napalm passes through the flame, it is ignited and propelled towards the target. Origins. The concept of throwing fire as a weapon has existed since ancient times. Early flame weapons date from the Byzantine era, whose inhabitants used rudimentary hand pumped flamethrowers on board their naval ships in the early 1st century AD. See Greek fire. Greek fire, extensively used by the Byzantine Empire, is said to have been invented by Kalinikos, Kalinikus, of Heliopolis, probably about 673. The flamethrower found its origins also in the Byzantine Empire, employing Greek fire in a device of a handheld pump that shot bursts of Greek fire via a siphon hose and piston, igniting it with a match, similar to modern versions, as it was ejected. Greek fire, used primarily at sea, gave the Byzantines a substantial military advantage against enemies such as members of the Arab Empire, who later adopted the use of Greek fire. An 11th century illustration of its use survives in the John Skylitz's manuscript. The Penhuochi, fire spraying machine, lit spray fire device, was a Chinese piston flamethrower that used a substance similar to petrol or naphtha, invented around 919 AD during the Five Dynasties and Ten Kingdoms period. Advances in military technology aided the Song Dynasty in its defense against hostile neighbors to the north, including the Mongols. The earliest reference to Greek fire in China was made in 917 AD, written by Wu Renchen in his Spring and Autumn Annals of the Ten Kingdoms. In 919 AD, the siphon projector pump was used to spread the fierce fire oil that could not be doused with water, as recorded by Lin Yu, in his Wu Yu Baishi, hence the first credible Chinese reference to the flamethrower employing the chemical solution of Greek fire. Lin Yu mentioned also that the fierce fire oil derived ultimately from China's contact in the southern seas, with Arabia, Dashikuo. In the Battle of Langshanjiang, Wolf Mountain River, in 919, the naval fleet of the Wenmiu king of Wuyu defeated the fleet of the kingdom of Wu because he had used fire oil to burn his fleet, this signified the first Chinese use of gunpowder in warfare, since a slow-burning match fuse was required to ignite the flames. The Chinese applied the use of double piston bellows to pump petrol out of a single cylinder, with an upstroke and a downstroke, lit at the end by a slow-burning gunpowder match to fire a continuous stream of flame, as referred to in the Wujing Zanjao manuscript of 1044 AD. 
in the suppression of the Southern Tang State by 976 AD, early Song naval forces confronted them on the Yangtze River in 975 AD. Southern Tang forces attempted to use flamethrowers against the Song navy, but were accidentally consumed by their own fire when violent winds swept in their direction. Documented also in later Chinese publications, illustrations, and descriptions of mobile flamethrowers on four-wheel push carts appear in the Wujing Zanjiao, written in 1044 AD, its illustration redrawn in 1601, as well. Although flamethrowers were never used in the American Civil War, the use of Greek fire was threatened, and flamethrowers have been in use in most modern conflicts ever since. Early 20th Century the English word flamethrower is a lone translation of the German word Flammenwerfer, since the modern flamethrower was first invented in Germany. The first flamethrower, in the modern sense, is usually credited to Richard Fiedler. He submitted evaluation models of his Flammenwerfer to the German army in 1901. The most significant model submitted was a man-portable device, consisting of a vertical single-cylinder 4 feet, 1.2 m, long, horizontally divided in two, with pressurized gas in the lower section and flammable oil in the upper section. On depressing a lever the propellant gas forced the flammable oil into and through a rubber tube and over a simple igniting wick device in a steel nozzle. The weapon projected a jet of fire and enormous clouds of smoke some 20 yards, 18 m. It was a single-shot weapon for burst firing, a new igniter section was attached each time. Hungarian Gaber Sakets invented the flamethrower which was first used by the German army in WWI. Gaber Sakets was the only Hungarian on the list of war criminals assembled by France after the war due to the invention of the flamethrower. Even his birthplace Budapest refused to bury Sakets because of his invention. It was not until 1911 that the German army accepted their first real flamethrowing device, creating a specialist regiment of 12 companies equipped with Flamenwerferaparaten. Despite this, use of fire in a World War I battle predated flamethrower use, with a petrol spray being ignited by an incendiary bomb in the Argonne Meuse sector in October 1914. The flamethrower was first used in World War I on February 26, 1915, when it was briefly used against the French outside Verdun. On July 30, 1915, it was first used in a concerted action, against British trenches at Hooge where the lines were 4.5 m, 4.9 yd, apart even there, the casualties were caused mainly by soldiers being flushed into the open and being shot by more conventional means rather than from the fire itself. The flamethrower had other limitations, it was cumbersome and difficult to operate and could only be safely fired from a trench, which limited its use to areas where the opposing trenches were less than the maximum range of the weapon, namely 18 m, 20 yd. A part which was not a common situation, the fuel would also only last for about two minutes. Nevertheless, the German army continued deploying flamethrowers during the war in more than 300 battles, usually in teams of six. British forces in the Battle of the Somme used experimental weapons called Liven's Large Gallery Flame Projector, named for their inventor, a Royal Engineers officer William Howard Livens. This weapon was enormous and completely non portable. Livens later invented the Livens projector, these were in effect crude mortars firing large bombs filled with incendiary liquid. A little later the weapon was adapted to project canisters of poison gas. Hundreds, or even thousands, of projectors firing almost simultaneously, would produce an instant cloud of poison gas on the target. Two more static flamethrowers mounted in HMS Vindictive, 1897, and several Hay portable flamethrowers were deployed by the Royal Navy during the Zebra Grade on April 23, 1918. The French Army deployed the Schilt family of flamethrowers, that were also used by the Italian Army. The Russian Army used 11,446 indigenously produced flamethrowers, over 10,000 of which were the Tavarnitsky man portable design. In the interwar period, at least four flamethrowers were used in the Chaco War by the Bolivian Army during the unsuccessful assault on the Paraguayan stronghold of Nanua in 1933. World War II The flamethrower was extensively used during World War II. In 1939, 
the Wehrmacht first deployed man-portable flamethrowers against the Polish post office in Danzig. Subsequently, in 1942, the U.S. Army introduced its own man-portable flamethrower. The vulnerability of infantry carrying backpack flamethrowers and the weapon's short range led to experiments with tank-mounted flamethrowers, flame tanks, which were used by many countries. Axis Use the Germans made considerable use of the weapon, Flaminwerfer 35, during their invasion of the Netherlands and France, against fixed fortifications. World War II German army flamethrowers tended to have one large fuel tank with the pressurizer tank fastened to its back or side. Some German army flamethrowers occupied only the lower part of its wearer's back, leaving the upper part of his back free for an ordinary rucksack. Flamethrowers soon fell into disfavor. Flamethrowers were extensively used by German units in urban fights in Poland, both in 1943 in the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising and in 1944 in the Warsaw Uprising, see the Stroop Report and the article on the 1943 Warsaw Ghetto Uprising. With the contraction of the Third Reich during the latter half of World War II, a smaller, more compact flamethrower known as the Einstoss Flaminwerfer 46 was produced. Germany also used flamethrower vehicles most of them based on the chassis of the SDKFZ-251 half-track and the Panzer II and Panzer III tanks, generally known as Flam Panzers. The Germans also produced the Abwehr Flaminwerfer 42, a flame mine or flame fugas, based on a Soviet version of the weapon. This was essentially a disposable, single-use flamethrower that was buried alongside conventional landmines at key defensive points and triggered by either a trip wire or a command wire. The weapon contained around 8 U.S. gallons, 30 liters, of fuel, that was discharged within a second, to a second and a half, producing a flame with a 15-yard, 14M, range. One defensive installation found in Italy included seven of the weapons, carefully concealed and wired to a central control point. Italy Italy employed man-portable flamethrowers and L3LF flame tanks during the Second Italo-Abyssinian War of 1935-1936, during the Spanish Civil War, and during World War II. The L3LF flame tank was a CV-33 or CV-35 tank at with a flamethrower operating from the machine gun mount. In the Northern Africa theater, the L3LF flame tank found little to no success. An L6LF flame tank was also developed using the L6-40 light tank platform. Japan Japan used man-portable flamethrowers to clear fortified positions, in the Battle of Wake Island, Corregidor, Battle of the Tenru on the Guadalcanal and Battle of Milne Bay. Allies Britain and the Commonwealth The British World War II Army flamethrowers, ACPAX, had a donut-shaped fuel tank with a small spherical pressurizer gas tank in the middle. As a result, some troops nicknamed them lifebuas. It was officially known as flamethrower, portable, number two. Extensive plans were made in 1940-1941 by the Petroleum Warfare Department to use flame fugas static flame projectors in the event of an invasion with around 50,000 barrel-based incendiary mines being deployed in 7,000 batteries throughout southern England. The British hardly used their man-portable systems, relying on Churchill crocodile tanks in the European theatre. These tanks proved very effective against German defensive positions, and caused official Axis protests against their use. This flamethrower could produce a jet of flame exceeding 140 metres, 150 yd. There are documented instances of German units summarily executing any captured British flame tank crews. In the Pacific Theater, Australian forces used converted Matilda tanks, known as Matilda Frogs. United States In the Pacific Theater, the U.S. Army used M1 and M2 flamethrowers to clear stubborn Japanese resistance from prepared defenses, caves, and trenches. Starting in New Guinea, through the closing stages on Guadalcanal and during the approach to and reconquest of the Philippines and then through the Okinawa campaign, the army deployed handheld, man-portable units. Often flamethrower teams were made up of combat engineer units, later with troops of the Chemical Warfare Service. 
The Army fielded more flamethrower units than the Marine Corps and the Army's Chemical Warfare Service pioneered tank-mounted flamethrowers on Sherman tanks, CWS POA H4. All the flamethrower tanks on Okinawa were supplied and manned by Army troops and often supported Marine infantry. Many of the first Marine flamethrower units were trained by Army specialists in Hawaii and other places in the South Pacific. The Marine Corps used the backpack type M2A1-7 flamethrower and M2-2 flamethrowers, also finding them useful useful in clearing Japanese trench and bunker complexes. The first known USMC use of the man-portable flamethrower was against the formidable defenses at Tarawa in November 1943. The Marines did pioneer the use of Ronson-equipped M3 Stewart tanks in the Marianas. These were known as Satan flame tanks. Though effective, they lacked the armor to safely engage fortifications and were phased out in favor of the better armored M4 Shermans. Most Marine flamethrower Shermans were of the Army type, CWS POA or Chemical Warfare Service Pacific Ocean Area. The Marines also deployed large Navy flamethrowers in the cargo compartment of LVT-4 AMTRACs and used them on Palilio. Late war both services operated LVT-4 and -5 amphibious flame tanks in limited numbers. In cases where the Japanese were installed in deep caves, the flames often consumed the available oxygen, suffocating the occupants. Both the Army and Marines still used their infantry portable systems despite the arrival of adapted Sherman tanks with the Ronson system, CF flame tank. Many Japanese troops interviewed post-war said they were terrified more by flamethrowers than any other American weapon. Flamethrower operators were often the first U.S. troops targeted. The U.S. Army used flamethrowers in Europe in much smaller numbers, though they were available for special employments. Flamethrowers were deployed during the Normandy landings in order to clear Axis fortifications. Most boat teams on Omaha Beach included a two-man flamethrower team. Soviet Union The Fog-1 and 2 flamethrowers were stationary devices used in defense. They could also be categorized as a projecting incendiary mine. The fog had only one cylinder of fuel, which was compressed using an explosive charge and projected through a nozzle. The November 1944 issue of the U.S. War Department Intelligence Bulletin refers to these Fugas flamethrowers being used in the Soviet defense of Stalingrad. The fog one was directly copied by the Germans as the Abwehrflammen were for 42. Unlike the flamethrowers of the other powers during World War II, the Soviets were the only ones to consciously attempt to camouflage their infantry flamethrowers. With the ROKS-2 flamethrower this was done by disguising the flame projector as a standard-issue rifle, such as the Mosin Nagant, and the fuel tanks as a standard infantryman's rucksack. This was to try to stop the flamethrower operator from being specifically targeted by enemy fire. This rifle had a working action which was used to cycle blank igniter cartridges. After 1945, the United States Marines used flamethrowers in the Korean and Vietnam Wars. The M132 armored flamethrower, an M113 armored personnel carrier with a mounted flamethrower was successfully used in the conflict. Flamethrowers have not been in the U.S. arsenal since 1978, when the Department of Defense unilaterally stopped using them, the last American infantry flamethrower was the Vietnam era M9-7. They have been deemed of questionable effectiveness in modern combat. Despite some assertions, they are not generally banned, but as incendiary weapons they are subject to the usage prohibitions described under Protocol 3 of the Convention on Certain Conventional Weapons. USA Army flamethrowers developed up to the M9 model. In the M9 the propellant tank is a sphere below the left fuel tank and does not project backwards. Non-flamethrower incendiary weapons remain in modern military arsenals. Thermobaric weapons have been fielded in Afghanistan by the United States. The USA and USSR both developed a rocket launcher specifically for the deployment of incendiary munitions, respectively the M202 Flash and the RPO RIS, ancestor of the RPO Ashmal. In the last stages of the Troubles, during the mid-80s, the IRA smuggled a number of Soviet LPO-50 military flamethrowers, supplied to them by the Libyan government, into Northern Ireland. They used a flamethrower, among other weapons, to storm a British Army permanent checkpoint in Dare Yard, 
near Rasaia, on December 13, 1989. Another IRA unit attacked a British Army watchtower, the Baruki Sanger, with an improvised flamethrower towed by a tractor in Cross Maglen, on November 12, 1993. The device consisted of a manure spreader which doused the facility with fuel, ignited few seconds later by a small explosion. A 9-meter-high fireball engulfed the tower. The four grenadier guards inside were rescued by a Saxon armored vehicle. Private Ownership In the United States, private ownership of a flamethrower is not restricted by federal law. Flamethrowers are legal in 48 states and restricted in California and Maryland. In California, unlicensed possession of a flamethrowing device statutorily defined as any non-stationary and transportable device designed or intended to emit or propel a burning stream of combustible or flammable liquid a distance of at least 10 feet HNW 12750, A, is a misdemeanor punishable with a county jail term not exceeding one year or with a fine not exceeding $10,000, CAHNW 12761. Licenses to use flamethrowers are issued by the state fire marshal, and he or she may use any criteria for issuing or not issuing that license that he deems fit, but must publish those criteria in the California Code of Regulations, Title 11, Section 970 ET Sec. In the United Kingdom, flamethrowers are a prohibited weapon under Section 5, 1, B, of the Firearms Act 1968 and Article 45, 1, F. of the Firearms, Northern Ireland, Order 2004 and possession of a flamethrower would carry a sentence of up to 10 years imprisonment. In 1994, a man attacked school pupils at Sullivan Upper School, just outside Belfast, with a homemade flamethrower. A South African inventor brought the blaster car-mounted flamethrower to market in 1998 as a security device to defend against carjackers. It has since been discontinued, with the inventor moving on to pocket-sized self-defense flamethrowers. Other Uses Flamethrowers are occasionally used for igniting controlled burns for land management and agriculture. For example, in the production of sugar cane, where cane breaks are burned to get rid of the dry dead leaves which clog harvesters, and incidentally kill any lurking venomous snakes. More common, however, a drip torch or a flare, fusee, is used. Small propane-fueled flamethrowers called roofers' torches are sold at hardware stores. They are used to install a tactic polypropylene app, rubber roofing, which is a cloth backing impregnated with asphalt that has been mixed with chemicals to turn it into a rubbery substance. The roofer heats the roll of roofing material with the torch until the asphalt melts, then presses the material onto the roof surface. Structure fires have been caused by improperly installing app roofing. The torches are popular with handymen who use them to clear walkways, strip paint, burn weeds and perform other tasks. U.S. troops used flamethrowers on the streets of Washington, D.C., mentioned in a December 1998 article in the San Francisco Flyer, as one of several clearance methods used for the surprisingly large amount of snow that fell before the presidential inauguration of John F. Kennedy. A history article on the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers notes, in the end, the task force employed hundreds of dump trucks, front-end loaders, sanders, plows, rotaries, and flamethrowers to clear the way. A squad armed with backpack flamethrowers had an important part in the 2012 Summer Paralympics closing ceremony. They had one big tank each. They could make a flame about 12 feet long. In April 2014 it was reported that a North Korean government official, Oh sang Han, deputy minister at the Ministry of Public Security was executed by flamethrower because he had followed Kim Jong-un's purged Uncle Jang sung taiks instructions to turn the ministry into a personal security division to help to safeguard Jang's business dealings. It has been known for police to fill a flamethrower not with inflammable liquid but with tear gas dissolved in water, see converted flamethrower 40. Please subscribe and thanks for watching.